When people, and particularly visitors to Ashe County, North Carolina, think about the Virginia Creeper, they often think of the mural on the Dollar Building in West Jefferson. Painted by local artist Stephen Shoemaker, the mural memorializes the famous train that during its heyday made 18 stops on its daily 76 mile run. To get a firm grip on what the Creeper was and what it truly meant to Ashe County residents, however, you have to understand what Ashe County was like before the Creeper came into the county. In the early 1900s, Ashe County, like most of the Appalachian Mountain counties, was isolated and hard to travel to and from. Its nickname was the Lost Province. Mountains were high and roads were rough. Traveling the 22 miles to Wilkesboro was a two-day affair by horse and wagon. With 300 residents, Jefferson was the county seat and the largest town in Ashe County, but the county was not without its own resources. In the 1890s, uh, Ashe County had prospered pretty well just with its own economy locally, uh, and um, it was doing some uh, export. Uh, in the uh, early 1800s, uh, Ashe County had developed an iron industry that uh, was principally uh, uh, headed up by Meredith Ballou and his family. Uh, the Ballous, of course, are still well represented in the phone book today. And um, that early heavy industry in the county uh, brought a lot of prosperity to the county and also meant that we could generate the materials here, iron, uh, to make uh, uh, the tools and, and equipment that the local farmers needed. So why then did anybody on the outside want to pay to build a railroad into the county? Two words, green gold. Ashe County had tremendous timber resources and northern timber barons wanted access to them. They had exhausted the forests of New England and the Appalachian Mountain region had the last great stands of virgin timber east of the Mississippi. The problem they faced was how to get to it. As mentioned previously, mountains were steep, creeks were plentiful, and roads were virtually impassable. But that didn't stop them. Families like the Hassinger family from Pennsylvania and enterprising men like W.E. Mangia from Virginia devised plans to bring the train to Ashe County starting in 1914. The uh, impulse from the railroad was that uh, they wanted to get into Ash County at the behest of the Hassinger Lumber Company primarily and others who wanted to timber in the county. And that was the real uh, green gold of the time. Uh, and if you look at our model, you will see that on the hillsides in the 1920s, the hills are bare. There's nothing but stumps. Uh, and uh, if you look at photographs of that time, uh, that's the way they looked. Uh, in fact, Jenny Todd, who was a school teacher in the county in the 20s, uh, wrote a little account that when, uh, and she was describing the county generally, but she talked about the fact that the, the, there had been so much timber cut that the streams were choked with the sawdust. And uh, that's what the rail was hauling. But bringing the train to Ash County to get all that timber was not an easy task, and it was not without controversy. The first question to be answered was, where will the train go? In an effort to save $50,000, or so they said, the railroad decided not to go through Jefferson, the county seat. Instead of going through Jefferson, which was the county seat, um, some influential county people, uh, among them uh, Tam Bowie and, and his friends, uh, owned land uh, a couple of miles away. And uh, by strange coincidence, uh, the railroad uh, went right through their land. And so all the entrepreneurs and, and uh, businessmen who wanted businesses at the railhead uh, bought land from the uh, friends who owned that uh, property around there and uh, created the town of West Jefferson. did not exist up until that point. Building the railroad was a Herculean task. Period construction equipment and the difficult geography made the laying of track a dangerous occupation. Bridges and trestles had to be built over the region's creeks, rocks had to be dynamited, and heavy iron track had to be maneuvered into place. The railroad brought experienced work crews into the county to do the hard work, including a number of African Americans. Mother Nature was not kind to the railroad. Constant floods, deep snows, and the continual need to replace worn parts and rotten wood 
meant that the railroad was very expensive to keep up. Local men, and even boys, were also hired to work on the railroad, particularly after bad floods in 1916, 1933, and 1940 wiped out a lot of the tracks, trestles, and bridges, and the railroad needed a labor force fast. This was a much needed source of income for a lot of financially strapped mountain families. In order to make a little extra money, many Ash County residents sold eggs, berries, and bagged lunches to the workers right up through the 1950s and 60s. People would, when the work crews was there, they would sell them eggs or um, maybe f berries. They'd pick maybe some berries or some cherries or something and they would sell to the cook to make them their food for the night. Many Ash County folks, especially the kids, enjoyed visiting the railroad work crew camps late in the evening after the day's work was done. It was a time of tall tales, stories, and games. See, and then they had work hands that would stay on a train sometimes and work on the track. And I guess one of the funniest things about one of those is uh, he, I don't know if he had a place to buy playing cards and had a little hardware over across behind it in Lansing and then had a little place to eat in it and had like a little dime store, we call it. And I took him over there and got him some and he caught back the car and he said, let me show you what these playing cards for. He said, we do this just to have something to do and just play penny poker. And he reached, reached up and got a jar and he said, I've got, I believe it was 82 cents he'd won in a year. That's what, what uh, he had won on that. And I thought that's pretty cute. What did the coming of the train mean for the towns in the county? Besides the creation of a brand new town, West Jefferson, it was a boom time. The rail uh, really brought uh, uh, prosperity to the county in a way that it had not seen before. Elkland, or as it is now known, Todd, grew overnight into the largest town in the county. Home to two stores, a grist mill, a sawmill, two churches, two mica mines, a copper mine, a soapstone mine, two lodges, a brothel, and the county's first car dealership. 1915 Todd was an exciting place to be. When our railroad was at last finished, we went to see the first train arrive. There were very few motor cars there. Most of the people rode horseback, in buggies, or they walked. I drove my trusty little white mare Kitty and latched her to a cart and took my three young children because I wanted them to see what was making history. In spite of Kitty's age and reliable ways, I was advised to hitch her out of sight of the coming event. She had never seen the train, and the noise and whistles might have scared her. My greatest trouble was my three children. I had them in a good spot and kept turning them in the direction of the train, telling them to look and always remember that they saw the first train come into Ash County. It was history, but they did not care a thing about the history part. They were more interested in the crowd and the ice cream and the peanuts being sold. Mrs. C.D. Neal. Todd was, was big. Todd was one of the biggest uh, population centers in the county and had uh, a lively commercial district. They had a couple of hotels and um, uh, the uh, big uh, railroad depot and uh, two or three general stores, a couple of banks, and Ash County's first Ford dealership, first car dealership in Ash County was in Todd. And um, uh, that was partly due to the railroad and the fact that, uh, that the, the Henry Ford could ship uh, vehicles down here and, and have them uh, arrive at the end of the line uh, and be offloaded. And, uh, and uh, Henry Ford, being the cheap rascal that he was, uh, <laughs> would ship the cars in in pieces. And the poor old uh, dealership had to, had to put the cars together and finish manufacturing them on site. I know Henry loved that. Aside from Todd, other towns and communities that experienced rapid growth and development included Baldwin, Fleetwood, Smithport, Warrensville, Nella, Tuckerdale, and Berlin, which changed its suddenly unpopular name to Bina after World War I started and the United States went to war with Germany. When I was a child, I would put my ear to the rail and listen for the train. You could hear the train through the rail long before you heard the whistle. As soon as I heard the first sound, 
I would run inside the house and tell Mama it was time to put biscuits in the oven because Daddy was arriving home from Abington. Ruth Esther McClung. Another Ash County town that experienced tremendous growth due to the coming of the railroad was Lansing. Started in 1882, Lansing started to boom in 1914 with the arrival of the Virginia Creeper. So much so that in the 1930s and 40s, Lansing became home to many different industries, including one of Ash County's two cheese plants. Came a, a manufacturing center as a part of the, uh, the rail uh, boom. Uh, and there were businesses that sprang up in, in Lansing, uh, mostly, again, extractive uh, type uh, industries and, and uh, things that were related to timber. Uh, Ash County had several extract plants. And people today say, well, what's an extract plant? What's an extract? And uh, what it was, uh, what was uh, tree bark from uh, chiefly chestnut and hemlock and uh, some oak. Uh, that was harvested and taken to these plants that were essentially big pressure cooker operations. And they would cook this bark uh, to get tannic acid, uh, which was then sold uh, to the leather industry. And of course in the early part of the, the 1900s, uh, leather was huge because uh, they didn't have any plastic. <laughs> and so, uh, 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 when plastics came in uh, in the 40s and, and 50s and, uh, uh, and largely d displaced uh, a lot of other materials, leather was one of the things that, uh, that sort of shrank in its importance. But at that time, everything that needed to be flexible material was, uh, or just about, was made of either leather or rubber. And um, uh, we didn't have any rubber trees in Ash County, but we had plenty of chestnuts and oak, and, and uh, so uh, uh, that was harvested as a support industry for leather. Lansing was also home to a popular restaurant owned by Rose Harrison in 1947. She was famous for her fried oysters, which came in by train from Norfolk, Virginia. One day she noticed she was missing some cans from the various cases of oysters that were being shipped in. Perplexed, she wrote a letter to company officials asking why this was. The railroad company conducted an investigation and found out that some of the men working on the train were borrowing a can of oysters here and there, making themselves hot oyster stew for the long rail trip to Lansing. How did the coming of the Virginia Creeper change people's lives? For one, it gave them a window on the world outside of the county. With new people and products pouring in, Ash County residents faced a level of prosperity that had never been seen before. Tied to this prosperity were many jobs working on the railroad lines or selling supplies to the railroad crews. In 1945, when I was 10 years old, I remember my daddy sending me by train from Bina to Bristol, Virginia to see my Aunt Ella Hudson. Daddy put a tag on me and gave me to the conductor with a note of where to leave me off. Because there were no phones, the only way of telling if I arrived at Aunt Ellis was by letter. Maud Calhoun. Perhaps the best thing of all, however, was folks could now order and have delivered items from the famous Sears Roebuck catalog. Items that were previously unavailable and especially hard to get were suddenly available, including ringer washers, sewing machines, Victrolas, farming equipment, and so much more. You, know, you could order your house from Sears and Roebuck. I mean, you could. you could. You could order a house and it would come in on a train car, all broken down in pieces, and, and uh, you got your local carpenter buddies to uh, put it up for you. Uh, and uh, all kinds of things uh, started coming in from the outside world, and stuff was going out uh, on, uh, on the rails from uh, the uh, commerce and industry and uh, agriculture that we had in the county. So it really opened Ash County up when, when the rail came. The train brought our family its first organ, a must for every parlor in those days. It was a beautiful mahogany Beckwith, and my father's rendition of Casey Jones is still vivid in my memory. Mary Norman. While the train brought prosperity into the county, it also brought tragedy. Train wrecks were not common, but they did occur, and at least one fatality happened because a child was too close to the tracks. I was told now, she was 18 months old down at the track, the house was right above it, uh, Harry Turner's daughter. 
and the train hit her and Miss Childers, Rosa Childers, her daughter told me that she had been to the store and had bags of stuff and threw them down, tried to get to her, but she didn't make it. It drove her about 200 feet almost down the wall from front. Even animals were not immune to the dangers of the rail. I know that some cattle were killed occasionally, that cows would, or calves would get on the railroad track and they would be killed. And I, it always scared me uh, when it was time for the train. I, if I was at home, I made sure the cattle was driven away from the tr railroad tracks and then daddy fenced it off so that they wouldn't get out and come that way. As quickly as the train entered the county, it seemed like parts of it were already picking up and leaving, as the timber and mining deposits started running out in the late 1920s. In fact, lumber shipments declined from 485 cars in 1927 to only 20 cars in the early 1930s. Uh, the boom period for lumber was uh, about 1915 to 1927. Uh, and during that time, uh, the lumber company cut every tree that they could reach practically. Uh, I, I jokingly tell people that uh, if you see a, a, a virgin timber tree in Ash County, it was either hanging so far off a cliff that they couldn't get to it, or it's in somebody's yard and he owned a shotgun because uh, the, uh, the timber boys, uh, uh, if it was standing, they wanted it horizontal. And uh, they went in and, and they, uh, they bought the timber rights. You know, they would go to a farmer or a landowner and say, we want to cut your borders. And uh, they would make a deal and, and uh, then they would go in and, and cut everything that they could get to because every tree they hauled out was money. And it's like a uh, lumber man told me one time, he says, uh, if the bits ain't in the wood, you ain't making money. So uh, they made sure that the bits were in the wood. As a result, train service was discontinued from West Jefferson to Todd in 1933. Almost overnight, Todd became a ghost town. And uh, that was when it uh, closed down in, in Todd, and uh, Todd essentially went from a boom town to a ghost town almost overnight. In 1957, the steam engine that was known as the Creeper was replaced by a diesel engine, much to the disappointment of many area kids and adults who loved the unique sights and sounds of the old steam engine. For the rest of the 1960s and 70s, the Creeper became known for its annual fall leaf excursion trips from West Jefferson to Abingdon and back. These trips over White Top Mountain were very popular and attracted visitors from as far away as Texas and California. I know I always wanted to ride the excursion train at having the fall, you know, where they'd put the, all these cars together and you could get a uh, a car with, you know, uh, I guess a covered car, or you could ride in the open car and uh, and look at the, the leaves in the fall of the year. And uh, I never did get to do that, but uh, I always wanted to. I thought that would have been a really good trip to take, but uh, uh, they pulled it up before I got the opportunity to, <laughs> to go. <laughs> On March 31st, 1977, the Virginia Creeper made its final run. It was truly the end of an exciting era of Ash County history. Nancy Zoppi, a local poet and musician, has memorialized the great train in her aptly named poem, Virginia Creeper. The Virginia Creeper. She was born in 1900 to the Virginia Caroline, part of the Norfolk and Western Railroad. She was a legend in her time. A short-lived journey through Blue Ridge history, yet a legendary rise to fame. She rode the rails from Abington to Elkland. Virginia Creeper was her name. The friendly train town folk called her because her workers smiled and waved as the conductor tossed out candy to barefoot children along her way. Smoke a-billowing, cinders flying, pistons pounding back and forth. Shoveling coal and adding water is what fed this iron horse. She had an eerie kind of whistle, like someone mourning for the dead, rather ghost-like as it echoed through the valley's town folk said. 
It was thought she lived and breathed, and if you listened, you could hear. She sighed and hissed and clanked and groaned when she bellowed, balked, and reared. Travelers gathered round the wood stove at Green Cove Depot in the rain, listening for that eerie whistle. Kids shouting, yonder comes the train. She huffed and puffed up White Top Mountain, straining hard against the grade. Panting engine at full throttle, slow but sure, her journey was made. She was hauling mail and timber, supplies and produce for the towns, connecting families with their kinfolk before she stopped and turned around. Well, grown men cried that day in Elkland, you heard the town folks say. It was a sad, sad day back in 1933 when the last train pulled away. Uh, in 1950, maybe 56, 57, 58 in that area, we would ride the train to Lansing, go to the uh, dime store, whatever we wanted, and then we would ride the train back. Um, then also we would go to West Jefferson, go to the drugstore, go do the little shopping, and it would stay about an hour in West Jefferson, and we would ride the train back home. I think I was about two or two and a half when we moved to to the house. It was right near the track, but uh, I think the my my earliest memories was uh, when that thing would go by and and I my mom would be holding me or something or I'd be hanging on to her and just watching that thing and it looked so big and you could feel the ground vibrate, you know, if you're standing pretty close and watch those rails sinking down, you know, when the, when the steel wheels would go over them and then it would rise up a little bit between the, the wheels. And uh, it was just, uh, uh, I guess that would be my, my earliest memories is, is, is just remembering how big that thing looked, you know, and, uh, and struck a little fear in me, <laughs> so. Well, first of all, every day they'd run to get to the track and threw candy off. So they'd get candy, they'd end it here. Would, uh, workers would throw candy out to them every day on the tracks. And then uh, some of them would put pennies on the track to flatten them out. Sometimes you could find them, sometimes they'd throw them out you couldn't find them. Even though the train is long gone, Images and references to the Virginia Creeper still abound in Ashe County. Aside from the large mural in West Jefferson, the Ashe County History Museum has done a wonderful job of keeping its memory alive. The Museum of Ashe County is, uh, is host to a wonderful exhibit that uh, was originally sponsored by the Ashe County Historical Society. And um, they enlisted the aid of about uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 volunteers at a time uh, who came in and formed a, a group that uh, has built a beautiful uh, diorama or train layout, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, that um, represents a portion of the Virginia Creeper line uh, as it served Ashe County. Um, the portion of the track that we show stretches from Tuckerdale in the north uh, down to uh, Elkland, or as it was called in the, in the trains uh, maps, or we call it Todd today. And uh, it was the terminus of the line uh, back in the period from about 1910 or 1915 to up until uh, 1933. Uh, there was a turntable in Elkland uh, that uh, turned the engine around and uh, sent it back the other way to Abingdon. Um, the uh, train passed through several uh, communities in Ashe County, uh, of which we show Tuckerdale, Lansing, West Jefferson, and Todd uh, on the uh, display that we have. Uh, and what we have done, or what the Historical Society and their wonderful volunteers have done, is to try to show the community in uh, the 1920s in uh, Tuckerdale, uh, 1930s in Lansing, 1950s in West Jefferson, and then back to the 20s in Todd or Elkland uh, because uh, the train didn't go there after 1933. The sadness of the train leaving was captured by the Rock Bottom Bluegrass Band in their song, Virginia Creeper Line. Things always change, you know. They say the train's too slow. 
They shut her down and pulled up all the track. Now the depot's all are gone, and the trussle she crossed on. And it breaks my heart to know she won't be back. I'd sort of messed with writing songs a little bit, and uh, uh, well, actually, Virginia Creeper was my second song that I tried to write, but uh, uh, anyhow, I was in a band, and I brought it to the band, and we decided we'd record it. I guess it made me happy that I had that as part of my childhood, you know, uh, a memory of, of my childhood, but uh, I guess whenever, uh, when you think about it, um, it's it's a little sad that it's gone, and you know it's never never going to be back because you know it'd be so expensive to bring that thing back. Uh, the loss of the train, which happened in 1977, uh, uh, probably didn't affect the economics of the county very much because by that time uh, the railroad had petitioned the ICC for years to let them shut down. They're, they're, they ran the, law, uh, the uh, uh, Virginia Creeper line at a loss from uh, about 1933 on up uh, because they had lost their main customer, which was the timber industry. And um, uh, in uh, 1977, they finally got permission to shut the line down and pull their rails up, and uh, uh, they were much relieved because it was costing them boku money to uh, maintain this, this twisty, hilly line with these old Civil War-style X-brace trestles that uh, were constantly being damaged by fire or flood or rot or whatever, and uh, uh, they were really happy to get out of it. Uh, what we lost in the county was an opportunity because if we had been able to save that line uh, and keep it running uh, as an excursion line, uh, we could fill the cars every day, I'm certain. In the early years, you know, it was, uh I guess it was uh, almost like a lifeline, you know, bringing in goods and bringing coal, you know, and uh, they had a, uh, the depot up there in West Jefferson, they had unload coal and people would go, you know, buy coal to heat with and uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of supplies come in through that thing, especially, you know, in the earlier years, but, uh, uh, and then, you know, I think people just sort of got used to it, you know, being a part of the county, and then all of a sudden it's, you know, it's gone. It's just, it's a, uh, uh, change is coming. That train, I don't know, I don't know if, uh, you know exactly what it means to meant to people, but it sure meant a lot to me. Years ago, you'd find me there in overalls without a care, shooting marbles in the cinders along the rail. Every Saturday at one, we knew the train would run. They throw candy to the kids in Tuckerdale. Oh, Virginia Creeper Line, you're running on those steel rails, my mind. Oh, Virginia Creeper Line, I'd like to hear your whistle one more time. train's too slow, they shut her down and pulled up all the track. Now the depot's all are gone, and 
trust so she crossed on and it breaks my heart to know she won't be back 